first one, um, the first speaker is Jin Kai Li from Wisman Institute. And he's going to speak um, the global strong solutions to the 3D primitive equations with only horizontal uh, viscosities and the diffusivity. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation. What I'm talking about today is the global strong solutions to the 3D primitive equations with only horizontal viscosity and diffusivity. The primitive equations is a model for the atmospheric and ocean dynamics. It is a fundamental system for the weather prediction, see these books. And it is derived from the navier stokes equations by the hydrostatic approximation and the Bosnitsky uh, approximation. Uh, in the context of atmosphere and ocean, the horizontal scale is much, strong, uh, much larger than the vertical scale. It is several thousand kilometers versus several kilometers. So the horizontal viscosities uh, are stronger than the vertical uh, viscosity. So this, mo uh, this motivates us to consider the following primitive equations, which only has horizontal viscosities and only horizontal diffusivity. So it has uh, four equations. Uh, first is the momentum equation. This is the hydrostatic approximation. This is the standard income possibility. And this is the temperature <coughs> equation. Here the unknowns are the horizontal velocity V, which has two components, V1 and V2, the vertical velocity W, and uh, the pressure P, and the temperature D. Here, we know that for the momentum equations, we only have two equations. There is no equation for the vertical velocity W, only the uh, income possibility. This is the main difference from the navier stokes equations. Uh, in, this, uh, in this part, we consider the uh, following initial and bound value conditions. Since we, uh, we are mainly interested in the structure of the system, so we use not any boundary, uh, boundary fact, so we consider the periodic boundary value problems and some same assumption in the Z variable, that is the horizontal variable. We note that the symmetry is preserved by the primitive equation itself as long as it is satisfied initially. Since the work of Beyond Tima and Wang, they proved the global existence of weak solutions, but without uniqueness. There are a lot of mathematical studies on the primitive equations. In particular, different from the 3D navier stokes equations, for the primitive equations with full viscosity and full diffusion, uh, the global existence of strong solutions has been proved. It was first uh, done by Chow and Titi in 2005, and later published in 2007. And see also the works by Kopkov, Kukvika, and Zayan. This is the global strong solutions to the system with full viscosity and full diffusion. It turns out that this global existence and uniqueness of strong solutions continue to hold true for the system with full viscosity, but with only partial diffusion. Here, we mean partial diffusion uh, means that with or vertical diffusion or horizontal diffusion. Anyway, we must, uh, uh, we need some diffusion to guarantee the global existence. In fact, if there is no diffusion, uh, if there is no diffusion, we can show that, uh, 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 sorry, sorry about, here uh, we emphasize that we must need uh, some viscosities. In fact, if without any viscosity, uh, the solution may blow up in finite Okay, based on these works, we can see that for a system with full viscosity, no matter with full or partial diffusion, the strong solution exists globally. 
as I mentioned before, uh, since the horizontal viscosity is much stronger than the vertical viscosity, so the extreme case is that the horizontal viscosity vanishes. So it's important to consider a case with only horizontal viscosity and only horizontal diffusivity. In this talk, I want to show that for such a system, the global existence and uniqueness of strong solutions continue to help you. That's the following main result. We assume that the periodic functions V0, T0 belong to H2 and satisfies the uh, same G in C. Then the solution, uh, the strong solution exists globally and uh, uni uh, uniquely. Here, I, I, uh, I should uh, mention that for such strong solutions, we cannot expect uh, uh, regular enough, for example, smooth. In fact, uh, for some, some initial date, uh, if, the, if we assume the solution is smooth, that is C infinity, we can show the uh, finite time blow up. Still, uh, see the works by Chow and TT. Okay, since the PNP equation is derived from the nervous stocks equations, it's natural to compare these two systems. The advantage for the PNP equation is that now the equation for W is reduced to the hydrostatic approximation, this equation. From here, we can see that P can be, in, uh, can be expressed in terms of T up to a bad time PS here. However, this bad time depends only two spatial variables. That's the key point. The disadvantage is as follows. First, since there is no dynam uh, dynamical equations for W, W can be only solved from the incompatibility condition. In our case, it can be expressed in this form. From here, we can say that there is one derivative loss for the velocity weight. And as a result, the strongly nonlinear term, this one, it seems like the square of the one derivative of V. From the non uh, from the nonlinearity, this term is stronger than the standard conversion term. Moreover, since, uh, since we consider a system with only horizontal viscosity, there is no smooth effect in the vertical direction. Some ideas are absorbed uh, to overcome these difficulties. First is that we know uh, it was known that the uh, Hard part of the pressure P depends on uh, depends only on two spatial variables. Next, we used anisotropic treatment on different derivatives of the velocity. Precisely, when we do the energy inequality of the same order derivatives, we always do the z derivative first and then the horizontal derivatives. Uh, it is also natural because of the anisotropic structure of the primitive equations. In fact, when we do the z derivatives this term, compare these two, for this one, we only have one derivatives. However, when we do the horizontal derivatives, this, uh, here we have two derivatives. Also, we note that large John Scalia type inequality can be applied to this 3D integral. Generally, we cannot use the, uh, the large sky type inequality. It doesn't hold true for general integral in 3D. However, for this special uh, case, we can indeed uh, apply large uh, uh, sky type inequality. And moreover, we use the logarithm, uh, logarithmic sort of inequality in this form and the system version of ground wall inequality. Okay, some analysis on the proof. 
local existence and uniqueness can be proved in a standard way. And local, uh, the local existence tells us that uh, if the initial date belongs to H2, then we have local strong solution. So uh, to obtain the global solution, it suffice to do the global in time H2 estimate. Uh, our energy inequality show that all high order estimates depend on the estimate of this quantity U, this, uh, which is the Z derivative of V. So let's try to do the estimate of this U. U satisfies this equation, have two bad terms of stretching type, these two terms. Then we multiply this equation by U we will encounter this term. Integrate by pass, we arrive here. For this term, uh, in the full viscous case, this can be, uh, can be controlled. We can show it uh, quickly. By the holder equality, we can put L6 here, 3 here, 2 here. Then use the Sobiev in burning equality, since we uh, uh, use 2D case. Then by the uh, Young equality, this term. This term can be absorbed. For this one, we emphasize that uh, for the full viscosity case, this can be obtained L infinity L6 bonded. So this is a good term. Sorry. Ah, oh, yeah. Square, uh, yeah, square. So by ground wall, this can be uh, is the obtained. This one, for this, uh, for this estimate, this is the key point in the paper by, uh, by Chow and TT. And uh, the driver, uh, for obtaining this, for obtaining this estimate is uh, technical. However, in our case, we only have horizontal viscosity. So this term cannot be done in the same way as here. And uh, in somehow we have to do the L infinite estimate of V. Keep this in mind. Let's, uh, let's start from the falling lemma that I call it the system version of ground wall inequality. This lemma tell us that when we do the energy inequality step by step, this multiplier coefficient n can be allowed to have the log of the summation of these AIs. This AIs is the time derivative part of the inequality. And moreover, at each step, the information carried from the previous steps is allowed to have of this form. Here, the important is that this, uh, this index up can be actually large. Under, the, uh, under these conditions, we can obtain a global estimate. And since this one is an important condition for us, so it is uh, worth to mention the following logarithmic solving inequality. This inequality tells us that as long as the LR grows no faster than Square root of uh, square root of r, then the L infinity 
can be bounded by the log of H2 of V, and this provides some, uh, somehow, uh, somehow a condition in the previous lemma. So, by eight of these two lemmas, to obtain the S2 estimate, we only, uh, we need to do the following two things. The first is to show the growth of LQ of V is growth no faster than square root of Q. And uh, as a result, this L infinity here can be bounded by log of H2 of V. As I mentioned here, we need to do some L infinity estimate. This is the first thing. The next is that to do such as uh, such inequalities up to second order derivatives, which enjoys the structure as they did in the groundwater type inequality. So let's uh, let's do these two things as follows. First is the LQ of V. This is done in the following three steps. First is the basic energy identity. Next is the LQ of V, which has this inequality. Here we observe that the Q depends on, uh, sorry, the C depends on Q, so this one doesn't provide the growth of LQ. However, based on this, we can obtain the desired growth of LQ of V. So this finishes the first thing. The next, uh, by the way, yeah, in fact, we, we don't need uh, for this one, we don't need for all the Q. We only use the case Q equals four. However, anyway, we can obtain this inequality. So the next uh, S2 of V, as I mentioned before, we, uh, we use an isotropic uh, treatment on the derivatives. We always do the Z derivative first and then the horizontal derivative. So first, DZV, that is U, satisfies these uh, two inequalities, L2 and L4 estimate, simply these two inequalities. Then the horizontal derivatives of V, we have this term. This one is good, it, uh, it's bounded, so ignore it. And this one, this one, check, uh, check before, it's nothing but this term, that is A2, A2 square. A2 square is allowed uh, because it has mentioned, uh, appeared before. Next, at the derivatives of U, we have this term. This term appears here, is B2, B2 is allowed. So still is good. Next, the horizontal derivatives of U satisfies this inequality. We have this multiplication which is nothing but A1, A3, A4, B1, B3, B4. Again, it appeared before, so uh, this is fine. And finally, the Laplacian of V, these two terms, again, these two terms are out. So based on these inequalities, we can obtain the S2 aspect of the V. So we can show the global existence of strong solutions. Okay, that's all. Thank you. So questions?